from the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. This is Carolina Week. Good evening, I'm Michael Handy. And I'm Brad Broders. Welcome to the February 3rd edition of Carolina Week. Our top story tonight, President Bush is promising that NASA will continue its exploration of space, but not until the investigation into Columbia's explosion is complete. The flag still flies at half-staff on the Carolina campus, honoring the seven men and women who died in the explosion Saturday morning. NASA officials say the investigation is now focusing on possible damage to the shuttle's heat protection system. One of the 30,000 heat protection tiles blew off during liftoff, and that might have struck a seam on a landing gear door. That seam protects vital wiring and sensors, officials say that could have played a part in the explosion. On Saturday, students on campus reacted to the tragedy. I had just woke it up and it, it, I was shocked. Um, I know I'm Jewish and there was Israeli on the shuttle and it was really um, disheartening. He was the first one. From what I had heard, funding is going to increase instead of decrease. So. Maybe it'll just heighten their awareness of like making sure that their aircraft are in good shape. It made me think about what happened when I was in kindergarten with the Challenger. Um, and I, I remember how upset I was about that. I know we're learning about a lot of things in space and what we can do in space, but what exactly is that doing for, for humanity? I'm NASA is asking people not to pick up any debris from the shuttle, but eBay is reporting several listings for shuttle debris on its online auction site. It quickly pulled the listings and warned that anyone attempting to sell debris could face federal and state prosecution. An update about Wednesday's explosion at the West Pharmaceutical Services plant in Kinston. Ten burn victims were airlifted to UNC hospitals on Wednesday. Nine remain in critical condition and one died on Friday, bringing the death toll to four. Doctors hope to take three patients off ventilators later this week and have scheduled two patients for surgery to remove burned skin. With a little more than a week until Election Day, student government hopefuls are doing all they can to win votes, while also following Congress's new campaign rules. This year, candidates had to wait an extra week to post signs and hand out flyers. Now they're working to comply with email and web page restrictions and to keep track of the actions of their staffs. Board of Elections Chairman Brian Faber says the changes simplifies the election process. Congress sort of stepped in to say, hey, you know, why don't we dumb things down a little bit so that candidates are based, you know, their campaigns are based more on verbal and getting their ideas out and less on making campaign workers run rampant for a month. Student body and president candidates will have a chance to do some verbal campaigning later this week during our SBP debate. Join us Thursday and Friday nights from 7.30 to 8.30 immediately after our regular show to hear candidates sound off about the issues. Carolina students taking advantage of Franklin Street's nightlife now have a safer and cheaper way to travel. Safe Ride will launch a new pilot program beginning Thursday. The program is aimed at stopping students from driving while impaired. Two new routes will offer free services Thursday, Friday and Saturday nights from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. The T route begins at the Varsity Theater on Franklin Street and runs down Airport Road up to the Timberline Shopping Center. The J route begins at the Carolina Coffee Shop on Franklin Street and covers the Merritt Mill and Smith Level Road areas. UNC Chapel Hill Jr. Anna Maria Caserta says she plans to take advantage of the new late night routes. Because a lot of times I don't want to drive. If I want to go to the club, I don't want to have to drive. And if it's open to three, you know, you can just take the bus after the club back to that park. So, good idea. The buses will run on 30 minute round trips. This spring, all branches of First Union Bank will become Wachovia branches. The current First Union branch on the corner of Franklin and Columbia Streets will close by May 8th. The current Wachovia branch located near Sutton's drugstore will remain open. A Wachovia spokeswoman from Charlotte says employees who deal directly with customers will keep their jobs. That includes branch employees at both First Union and Wachovia. The two banks are in the process of merging information into one system. First Union bought Wachovia in 2001, agreeing that Wachovia's name would be used. Wachovia Bank employs more than 1,900 people in the Triangle. So far, there's no word on how the space at the current First Union will be used. Well, nominees for this year's Grammys are out. A local music group might not win one of those, but it could bring home a different type of award. 
The Lorelei's are nominated for two national a cappella awards, one for Best Female Collegiate Album entitled One, and the other for Best Song, Way You Make Me Feel. And don't get too attached to this warm weather. The groundhog Punxsutawney Phil saw a shadow Monday morning, which means six more weeks of wintry weather. Well, that does it for this, this edition of Carolina Week. And stay tuned for Sports Spotlight. It was a busy sports weekend at Carolina. trouble? No, you're not going to get in trouble. Are you sure? They're not even going to know, okay? I can't go to school if I'm sick. Just go to school so you can get some lunch. Then you can come home afterwards. There's a difference. You're dead wrong. Alcohol kills more people under 21 than heroin, cocaine, and every other illegal drug combined. Mad. Say nothing. Do nothing. Stop. Nothing. Welcome to this week's edition of Sports Spotlight. I'm Aaron Mesmer. Coming up, the tennis teams are just starting their season while the swimming and diving teams are finishing up. But first, we'll start with basketball. Last season, Carolina's men's basketball squad suffered its worst loss in the history of the Smith Center, a 22-point drubbing at the hands of Wake Forest. Sunday night, the Demon Deacons returned to Chapel Hill in hopes of turning the Dean Dome into the Deke Dome. In the first, Jawad Williams gets the heels off to a high-flying start, throwing down the jam to put the heels up by two. Steve Laporte takes advantage of the heels on the inside, gets the basket and the foul, and Wake is up by six at the half. In the second, the heels put on a clinic for the Deeks, showing they can go coast to coast, or down low, or even from behind the arc. But senior star Josh Howard is the key for Wake Forest down the stretch scoring 18 of his career-high 32 points in the second half en route to a 79-75 win. Wake Forest coach Skip Prosser says Howard's play Sunday inspired the team. He, he, wills, he wills them to win, and I think the thing that he imbues them with, uh, most readily apparent to me anyway, is courage. You know, this is, a, this is a tough venue to play in. As I said, Matt and those guys played very, Matt coached well, they played well, and, um, but you know, Josh wasn't having it. Sunday's loss extends Carolina's losing streak to four, and it doesn't get any easier for the Heels this week as they travel to fifth-ranked Duke on Wednesday. All of the student tickets are now taken. The ticket office gave out the last of them at 8.30 Monday morning. When Coretta Brown hit the game-winning shot against Maryland last week, she stole the glory from another Carolina women's basketball star. Nikita Bell scored 30 against the Terps and has been on a tear lately. Bell tried to keep up her pace, facing Virginia and Georgia Tech during the weekend. Nikita Bell scored 30. Bell is ready for the Wahoos Thursday night, but Virginia smells an upset. Latanya Blue with two of her team-high 14 points. But here's Bell taking the inbounds pass, spinning and hitting. Heels by a point at the break, keeping the fans happy. Second half, Latangela Atkinson with the steal and the drive for two as Carolina pulls away. Then Brown finds Bell to seal it. Bell scores 21 and says UVA simply left her unguarded. Most of my shots were jump shots, I think, and they left me open, and I know like the little 15-foot range right there, that's my shot, and I'm wide open, so I just balanced myself and I knocked it down. Sunday against Georgia Tech, Latangela Atkinson gets the heels started early with a nice baseline move. Megan Harpering, sister of former Tech basketball star Matt Harpering, tries to do her best impression of her brother to keep her team close. But Carolina's Leah Metcalf, with the nice steal, 
and dish to Nikita Bell gives the Heels a lead they wouldn't give up. Tex Mallory Wynn scores 14 of her 21 points in the last four minutes to try to bring the Jackets back, but Carolina is too tough and holds on for the 76-64 win. After three games in seven days, the Heels have a break until Friday when they travel to Raleigh to take on NC State. Game time is 7 o'clock. After starting the season with an 8-0 record and on the road, the gymnastics team hosted its first meet on Friday. Gymnasts from William and Mary and James Madison come into Chapel Hill and witness a dominating Tar Heel performance. But coach Derek Galvin looks, pat, looks pleased with his team. The Heels take the top four places in the vault, led by Olivia Trusty's 9.9. Carolina wins first place in every event, and freshman Courtney Bumpers wins all, all the all-around title for the third consecutive meet. The Heels save their best for last. In the evening's final event, junior Anna Wilson scores a perfect 10 on the floor exercise. Afterward, Coach Galvin talked about the magnitude of Wilson's accomplishment. This score, scoring a 10, that's forever. No one is ever going to break that record. That's forever. No one is ever going to break that record. And, uh, you know, it's kind of neat to have that, that accolade. Carolina men's tennis opens its season with a number 26 ranking. The Tar Heels kick things off with a pair of weekend matches against Princeton and Georgia. First up Friday are the doubles matches. Tristan Manayan and Nick Monroe taking on Darius Creighton and David Gopstein. Manayan hits the winner and Carolina takes the doubles point. Manayan again in singles. The ace as the senior from France cruises 6-2, 6-3. Monroe picks up a singles win of his own, as does Daniel Pinchbeck. Tar Heels hold on 4-3. On Sunday, the Heels take on the number 20 Georgia Bulldogs, a team that's finished in the top five in 12 of the past 13 years. In doubles, Carolina's Andy Metzler and Daniel Pinchbeck win their match 8-3. Tristan Manayan and Nick Monroe follow suit with an emotional win of their own as North Carolina takes the doubles point. In singles, all six matches would go the full three sets. Metzler rallies to give Carolina its first singles point, and it's Monroe again who clinches the match with a 6-4, 3-6, 6-4 win. The Tar Heels upset the Bulldogs 5-2. The women's tennis team picked up two big wins during the weekend as well. Saturday, the fifth-ranked Heels lost the doubles point to 21st-ranked Notre Dame, but won five of the six singles matches to beat the Irish 5-2. On Sunday, the Heels survived a fight from 16th-ranked Northwestern, with the match tied at three all, number three seed Annie Alamoses came back from losing the first set to win her match and lift the heels to victory. Some teams may have a tendency to panic when they fall behind early. That wasn't the case this weekend when the Tar Heels wrestling team faced the Maryland Terrapins in Carmichael Auditorium. Junior heavyweight Ryan Adams is not fat, he's pleasantly plump, and he uses his weight to his advantage in a 10-3 decision helping the Tar Heels overcome an early 3-0 deficit. Sophomore Chris Rodriguez gives Carolina a 9-6 lead, pinning Maryland's Matt Pandulo 61 seconds into his match. Next up is Evan Sola. He brings the pain in his 15-0 technical fall. Sola improves to 22-8 overall, 3-0 in the ACC. The beatdown continues as Carolina wins seven out of the last eight matches, making easy work of the Terrapins 30-9. The Carolina softball team will have to find some offense if it wants to win some games. The Heels were shut out 3-0 and 4-0 in a season-opening doubleheader against 20th-ranked South Carolina. The Heels have 10 days to find their offense before they travel to East Carolina for another doubleheader next Wednesday. Well, that does it for this edition of Carolina Week. But uh, one last note, offensive lineman Jeb Terry and linebacker Doug Justice made academic All-ACC. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.